Wallace Industrial Tools and Supplies knows Southern Illinois. Located in West Frankfort, they're your Milwaukee Superstore with over 8,000 square feet. Wallace Tools has the largest selection of Milwaukee within a two-hour radius. Find power tools such as drills, saws, lights, shop backs, and more with pricing lower than you'll find anywhere else. Wallace Industrial in West Frankfort. IBI Management manages over 2.5 million square feet of industrial storage warehousing and office space in Tennessee, Indianapolis, Ohio, Illinois, and South Carolina with 64 tenants. Please feel free to contact us for any management needed for your property. Feel free to reach out with any questions to Bobby and Iris Cazzotti. With an award-winning body shop right here in West Frankfort, Illinois, Wix is your hometown Chevrolet GMC Chrysler Dodge Ram dealer. Come out and visit us in person or online at gregweeks.com. Your hometown dealership right on the price right off I-57. Kids Corral Incorporated, celebrating 25 years serving the children and families of Southern Illinois. Owned and operated by Gina King and Kristen Cass. Kids Corral in West Frankfort. Redbirds Live, brought to you by the partners of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates, including former West Frankfort High School dual sports standout Lance Brown and fellow West Frankfort alumni and veteran Matthew Carraway. The law firm of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates are proud members of the West Frankfort community and proud servants of all of Southern Illinois. Ask Melissa Walden about Shelters Auto, home and life options. Call or text at 618-937-2092. Melissa Walden, Shelter Insurance in West Frankfort. Contact Power Wash Plus for a free quote on all your residential or commercial pressure washing needs. Professionally operated and fully insured. Call Power Wash Plus at 618-663-2505 for more information. That's Power Wash Plus at 618-663-2505. Hal Insurance is a proud sponsor of Redbird Athletics. Serving West Frankfurt since 1925, we provide auto, home, business, life, and health insurance. Hal Insurance partners with Auto Owners Insurance Company to handle insurance the right way, the human way. Call Ryan, Jessica, or Susan Patton at 937 Four zero zero zero. Experience a taste of Mexico at La Fiesta Mexican Restaurant. We have the best food and drinks for the whole family to enjoy. See you tomorrow, amigos. The city of West Frankfort is proud to support the students of Frankfort Community High School. The future is in the youth of our community. Go Redbirds. McDonald's, family owned and operated, Moreland McDonald's has 21 locations to serve you. People's National Bank has been serving the communities of Southern Illinois since 1909. We believe that great customer service along with a wide variety of products will meet all of your banking needs. Come in and check us out today. People's National Bank, member FDIC. The West Frankfort Aquatic and Activity Center are proud partners of Redbirds Live. Come check out our heated indoor swimming pool, fitness center, and basketball gym. Stop by for a visit or you can contact us at 618 937 1665. Well, we welcome you guys in to Redbirds Live, live from Bill McKee Field in West Frankfort here on this Saturday, and we're set for today's contest. The West Frankfort Redbirds, and they welcome in the Lawrenceville Indians. I'm joined by my buddy Paxton. I'm Garrett, and uh, Paxton, this is a team you don't normally play, especially this deep into the season, but, um, you know, it's, I think it's nice to get out of some, you know, those routines you fall in. You see the same team so much, so it's nice to get a fresh face out here in a team that uh, has been playing some decent baseball coming up in, uh, in today's game. Yeah, it's always nice to change things up a bit. A lot of times you see the same teams on repeat. You know a lot of the same players you've played against for years, so it's nice to go up against a pitcher or teams that you've never faced before. Especially coming off a tough loss yesterday, you know, it'd be nice to get a nice win here on a Saturday. A little bit of a chilly day today. The sun's, though, starting to shine here, which has helped a little bit, but... Uh, Pretty chilly. It was cold yesterday. Frankfurt lost yesterday at Benton, and they're looking to snap a losing streak that they've hit as they've hit into the or they've run into the middle of the gauntlet that is the River to River. And uh, we thank you guys for tuning in here in our pregame show, brought to you by Wallace Industrial Tools and Supplies. And we said it before we went on, Paxton. Frankfurt's biggest issue this season has been uh, playing clean defensively, and and that's uh, something that has to be. A focal point in terms of the keys to the game and that's where we'll get here with our keys to the game brought to you by weeks and russ frankfurt right on the price right off i-57 paxton where are some keys for frankfurt today well you know keep it clean it's going to be something you have to do can't give up more than three outs in an inning that's really been the big 
Achilles heel for the rubber team this year. Um, have good approaches at the plate, know what you want to do. And I think that's really all it's going to take. Um, this team's a good team. You just got to play good, sound baseball. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Lawrenceville comes in at kind of an odd record, 6-7-1. and seven and one. So they had a game that probably went too long. It was interesting. Um, probably, I'm assuming soccer record. played somewhere where it probably called for darkness or something. 6-7-1. Um, See if we can find some uh, common opponents. Like Frankfurt, they lost to a really good Carmi White County team. Um, other than that, nobody that would be on Frankfurt's schedule. Fairfield potentially in the postseason, but not on Frankfurt's regular season. Um, they were able to beat them 12 to 11. So yeah, six and seven and one. Frankfurt's uh, had a rough week playing some good opponents. And they're back next week as well with uh, wrapping up conference play. I think they got a couple conference games next week, and that will be it. And they got AJ, and then they got Benton here, which we will have. Originally, Benton was scheduled for yesterday. Um, I got moved to Benton. We didn't cover it. So now we'll cover the game Tuesday with Frankfurt versus Benton here at Bill McGee Field. All right, we will take a short break after the coaches' meeting. We'll get you the national anthem. And then uh, we'll have you some Redbirds baseball against the Lawrenceville Indians here on Redbirds Live. All right, real quick, we will get you your starting lineups. That is brought to you by Sam C. Mitchell and Associates in West Frankfurt. We'll begin 
with the visiting Lawrenceville Indians. Leading off, number nine at third base, Maddox Pargan. Batting second, number four, behind the plate, Nylon or Neyland Vickers. Batting third in center field, number one, Emery Ivers. In the cleanup spot at shortstop, number three, Landon Sanders. Batting fifth and left, number 13, Eli Denard. Batting sixth at first base, number 25, Jack Patterson. Batting seventh at second base, number six, Hunter Gray. Batting eighth, pitching, number eight, Boston Gray. And rounding out the lineup, number 51 in right field, Noah Wilson. Now for Frankfurt's starting lineup, leading off in right field, number 12, Jace Bennett. Batting second in center, number three, Cam Joyner. Batting third in left field, number two, Chase Patterson. Batting fourth, number one, the shortstop, Hayden Mitten. Batting fifth at first, number six, Will Scales. Batting sixth at third base, number four, Eric Duncan. Batting seventh on the bump, number 11, Deacon Webster. Batting eighth, designated hitter number zero, Lucas Parker. And rounding out Frankfurt's lineup at second base, number eight, Chris Samples. And then Ethan Odom will be behind the plate. And that is who Parker will be doing the hitting for in Frankfurt's lineup. It's your Sam C. Mitchell and Associates starting lineups. And Paxton, with a, with a different opponent here, uh, Frankfurt looks to rely on the senior, Deacon Webster. And he's the type of guy that... Uh, can be very, very uh, in control of a ball game, and um, you know can come out and give Frankfurt a really good start as long as he can throw some strikes. Because uh, when he's around the zone, he's pretty good. Yeah, it's going to be important to throw strikes today. And you know, you mentioned to me when I got here that you know, these guys had quite a bit of a bus trip here this morning, so I'm sure they had to get up early today, get themselves going even earlier than this Frankfurt squad had to. So I think it's important for the Redbirds to throw the first punch here today and make sure they kind of show the squad what they're going to do here on their home field. So I think it would be very important here for the Redbirds to score first and make it clean. That's going to be the most important thing is to play clean, sound baseball. Yeah, and uh, for Lawrenceville, they'll have Pargan, Vickers, and Ivers, one, two, and three in their lineup, leading things off here in the top half. And another thing for Frankfurt is find a way to come to the plate with, with a zero. You know, that, that goes a long way. Um, if you can get a quick top of the first uh, zero put up there, especially, you know, it's basically a fresh lineup starting at the top. And the quicker you can get out of this top of the first, the more momentum you can build as you go to the bottom. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of times on defense, if you make an error, it kind of goes with you back into the dugout. So it's, like you said, it's going to be very important here to have a one, two, three, or at least no run scored here in this top half and try to put some runs up in the bottom half get some confidence going after that tough loss yesterday. You know, the Redbirds, tough week, losing Paxton just mentioned yesterday, but also earlier in the week. to Ziegler Royalton, also a couple of conference opponents in Nashville and DuPont. So some good baseball teams that Frankfurt had to face this week. And there's another one here today that, like a lot of teams and like a lot of baseball teams have, you know, not just at this level, ups and downs, but uh, they found a way to win some games. And another thing for Frankfurt, they need to score some runs. Uh, they've had an issue scoring runs here recently. Zeros put up a couple days ago against uh, Ziegler and the day before against Ducoin. Just two yesterday against Benton, a team that you thought you probably could have put up some runs against. Um, and it seems to be that it's easier to score early in contests uh, rather than late. Yeah, it's going to be important to play a clean game. It seems like when their offense is going, it's one inning. They score a lot of runs. So they just need to try to figure out how to have better approaches all through the game. First pitch from Webster to Pargan comes in at 11.03 in the morning for a swing and a miss for strike one, and we're underway. 
Webster can locate his pitches. He'll be in a good spot, and as will the Redbirds here today. They count one and one on Maddox Pargan, Lawrenceville's leadoff hitter, and he takes one high. Two and one. And the count quickly three and one after Webster got that early swing and a miss. So we're running with a three man umpiring crew here today. There's one fouled off, directed towards Lawrenceville's dugout. The count goes full. Must be lots of action expected today. Important here to get this first out here, not get a leadoff walk. Set the tone here. Something around the zone. You'd rather him, you know, just punch a single out there than walk. Instead, it's way high for ball four. Leadoff walk to begin the game. Here's Neyland Vickers, Lawrenceville's catcher, and he takes ball one low and outside. There's that leadoff walk, and it feels like it's happened quite a bit this season um, to start games, and it's all it seems like it's always with a full count, too. And, you know, you're one pitch away, and instead now you've got a runner on, and he was picked if they could have caught him at first, and Scales couldn't catch him. Would have been an out. Webster had... Pargan leaning, and he would have been picked off. Go beat him. And it uh, didn't look like it bounced in. It just looked just like low throw, yeah. it was low, and Scales couldn't make the adjustment in quite enough time. It would have been a perfect throw for a tag. Probably wouldn't have had to really move it much. But it was outside. They throw behind the runner. And it's ball two. Two and oh. to Neyland Vickers. They try again, and he's safe again. And that was another one where Scales had to come off the bag to get it, but it's another one that was led into the runner. So, I mean, he didn't have to try to apply the tag. And once he caught it, it was already on the runner in Pargan, and they tried a couple of times on him. And Vickers this time gives Webster a break. After he went around after a pitch, that would have been ball three. It's two and one. They try on Pargan again. It's four attempts to throw him out at first between Webster and Odom. Three by way of the pitcher. And he's going this time. Fouled off to the right. Runner retreats, it's two and two. With Ivers in the on deck circle. Two and two, will Pargan run this time? No, he will not. And it slipped down the first baseline foul. A lot of pitches thrown here for the first two batters without recording it out. That's a three two count, now you got a battle. Over towards Second base position, and there is Chris Samples for a big out number one. And Webster couldn't get Pargan on the 3-2, but he could get Vickers. So uh, get a big out and you keep Pargan at second base. Yeah. Huge keeping the runner at second. This is center fielder Ivers who hits it back up the middle, and it hits off the back, and that's going to score a run. RBI single for Ivers. I mean, that's a ball that's got to be fielded before the bag. I mean, that's yeah, I mean, way I, too I mean, slow. I, I knew from as soon as it was hit, it was going to hit the bag. You can't let it hit the bag and then act like you weren't expecting it. It was moving at a snail's pace as well, so it wasn't like it was a, you know, little just Chapman speed coming at you. They weren't going to get the runner at first, but with it being fielded so deep, when it hits the bag, 
it allows for an easy runner at third to come home and target. And there's a stolen base on ball one. In a 1-0 Lawrenceville lead here in the first. Ivor swings, pops it up. Odom gives it a look. He's in foul ground, and he can't get it. It's happened a lot this year, and that's a play that has got to be made. It's, uh, it's not as hard as the Redbirds have made it out to be this year. The Bermuda Triangle, and if it's happened once, it's happened a million times. You now you're wow. working with four outs this inning. I think the uh, will be strike one on that foul ball. I think the big problem is this one misses high. Um, a lot of the fielders tend to not know whose ball it is. Yeah, say so no one calls for it. You got to take charge. Okay. Um, you can tell everyone's wanting the other person to take it. And a lot of times we've seen Frankfurt try to stick their pitcher out there to try to catch it. When you're taught to get out of the way of anything, the only thing you're going to go after is maybe, you know, a real quick pop up that no one else can get to. That's the only thing yeah. you're going to go after as a pitcher. You're taught to get out of the way. Um, that hasn't been the case here. It's two and two. And a good pitch. pitch from Webster to sit down Landon Sanders. I Goes was, down looking. I was always told as a catcher that you don't want your pitcher to ever have to catch a pop up. You go for any ball until you hear somebody else call you off. Again, as a pitcher, you're taught to get out of the way. Absolutely. You don't want your pitcher to work for that. Ball bounced in the dirt. Runner and Ivers takes third. Eli Vinard, the left fielder, he swung at that for strike one. You know, a lot of times, too, I've noticed, especially just watching the catchers when those are pop-ups, they're not really jumping up, and you want to put your back towards the pitcher and find that they're just trying to guiding with the ball, and that's why they're all dropping like they are. Bernard swings at another one uh, inside for 0-2. He's chased a couple pitches out of the zone. Now if you're Webster, hey, stay out of the zone. Keep it there. See if he goes after another one. He does. He pops it up. Back behind the plate. It's out of play. Count stays 0-2. Go two. Just got out in front of it, and fouled it down the right field line. I think if he doesn't hit that ball, it hits him. <laughs> Was coming in pretty really aggressively. Really committed to swinging. He's seen four pitches. He swung at all four. The ball been about at the knee every time as well. Webster 0-2. He's got a runner at third. He needs to stay there. This one misses high. Not a bad miss with how swing happy that Bernard has been here. It's a good way to pitch. Maybe a little too high. Or yeah. Saw it out of the hand. It's going to be way up there, I think. A little bit lower. He's, he's probably going after another one up there. If you go high and in, I think it would have worked. There it was. Off speed. Gets Bernard to swing and miss. But Lawrenceville gets on the board. The Indians lead at one nothing over your Redbirds. We'll take a quick sponsor break. We'll give you the bottom of the first here. From Bill McKee Field, this is Redbirds Baseball on Redbirds Live. Ask Melissa Walden about Shelters Auto, home and life options. Call or text at 618-937-2092. Melissa Walden, Shelter Insurance in West Frankfurt. Wallace Industrial Tools and Supplies knows Southern Illinois. Located in West Frankfurt, they're your Milwaukee superstore with over 8,000 square feet. Wallace Tools has the largest selection of Milwaukee within a two-hour radius. Find power tools such as drills, saws, lights, shop backs, and more with pricing lower than you'll find anywhere else. Wallace Industrial in West Frankfurt. Bob. 
bottom one we go, and the Redbirds will have Jace Bennett, Cam Joyner, and Chase Patterson do up. There are three outfielders here today in the bottom half of the first, and they will go up against Boston Gray, who's out there pitching for Lawrenceville. Name sounds familiar. Sounds like a professional athlete that I've heard of already, doesn't it? Boston Gray. Seems like it would fit the the, like, fit the bill there. Yeah, it does. I don't know why I'm thinking that, but it sounds like it would have been a name I've heard before. Maybe a long-lost relative of uh, Sonny Gray? Yeah, maybe that's what it is. The Cardinals <laughs> good and only pitcher. I won't say that. They, their pitching has been terrible. It's just their offense right now. That's what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen? Once their offense finds it, then their pitching will start giving up eight runs every night, just like last year. Yeah, their pitching has not been bad. For a team who you expected your pitching to be your weak link. But I don't know what they were expecting with 37-year-old Goldschmidt either. To be fair, before we get into this bottom half, I'm not sure what the hype was about the offense. They didn't change anything, and the offense last year wasn't very good. Nope. nope. And they haven't done anything with that bullpen for six years either, so they're just banking on a weak division, hoping it lasts. Banking on Lance Lynn. <laughs> Definitely help the concession prices. <laughs> Here's Jace Bennett, and I like to see him at the top of the lineup. Uh, he's one of them guys that can bat in the nine, but you feel like you're really missing out on an A-B with him being way down there, and uh, he's the type of guy that you need uh, up there in the top. The same with you see in samples and joiner that just find ways on base, whether it's a walk, reaching on an air even just by putting it in play and hustling down the line quickly. But this, this table setter has to do exactly that, set the table and get on base. Bennett shows bunt. Bunted out in front of the plate. And it's going to be an infield bunt single. That's how I'd score that. It's got to be made by the catcher there, but yeah, yeah. it's a good job of making the pitcher work early here. Hard to score that in error with how. Yeah. Well, I, the, the grass is still wet a little bit as well. I'd say. Still wasn't. I was walking up. Regardless, Jay Spinnett's at first base, and here's Cam Joyner. Big move on him. He's back in safely is Bennett. At least for the games I've been at, a lot of the rallies have started with bunt singles, so maybe that gets something going here in the bottom half of the first. Seems like that's the guy that does it, yep. too. Joiner takes a good pitch for strike one. You've got Paul Massey behind the plate, so you got to be aware that you're going to have the delayed strike signal. Yep. He's actually... Uh, He's done a pretty good job in the games we've had him here. He was one of my favorites. This one slapped right at third, oh. and that could be a double play, and it is. Lined right into the glove of Pargan. 5-3 doubling off Bennett at first. You're right, that is tough, because that's a base hit most of the time. And a nice reaction from Pargan. is able to then gather and throw to first for the double play. That's why you got to freeze on a line drive unless there's two outs. Strike one floats into Chase Patterson. Frankfurt's left fielder. Next one out in front. Patterson pops it up towards second. And under it to make the catch is Hunter Gray. Very quick. Bottom of the first. We're heading to the second. It's 1 0 Indians of Lawrenceville over your Redbirds. Redbirds Live, brought to you by the partners of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates, including former West Frankfurt High School dual sports standout Lance Brown and fellow West Frankfurt alumni and veteran Matthew Carroll. The law firm of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates are proud members of the West Frankfurt community and proud servants of all of Southern Illinois. IBI Management manages over 2.5 million square feet of industrial storage warehousing and office space in Tennessee, Indianapolis, Ohio, Illinois, and South Carolina with 64 tenants. Please feel free to contact us for any management needed for your property. Feel free to reach out with any questions to Bobby and Iris Cazzotti.
All right, we head to the top of the second. It's 1-0, Lawrenceville. And, you know, yeah, the run came in, but in the top. But after that walk, Webster had, you know, a lazy pop-up. The ball that hit second base, that was a very weak ground ball and then a couple of strikeouts. So let's see if he can settle in and continue how he, continue a strong second after a strong top of the first. Yeah, absolutely. You know, kind of felt like when you saw that pop-up there that it, things might get rough with the defense, but only allowing one run there was pretty nice. You just got to keep it there. Hopefully your offense uh, and your defense has your back today. Most importantly, the defense. Jack Patterson steps in, and he waves and misses at the first pitch. These guys really do swing are, that. Yeah, I was just thinking that. They are aggressive. Patterson's able to lay off this one that misses outside. I'm hoping they're getting, getting over fastball every time. This one's smacked out towards left. Back. Off the wall, or it's over the wall. It's a home run. Looked like it bounced back, but Patterson hooks it down the line for a solo shot. And it's 2-0 Lawrenceville. That got out quick. It yeah, popped it off uh, maybe some of them electrical boxes out just beyond the wall. Originally, it looked like it might have hit the wall, but uh, a line drive solo shot from Patterson makes it 2-0. Pulled that right down the line. Nice way to get his Saturday started. Now it's Hunter Gray, the Lawrenceville second baseman. But you know what? If you're going to give up a home run, you'd rather it be a solo shot. So. Get that one out of the system and reset here. First pitch, pitch from Patterson is high. Ball, or from Webster is high. If you wanted to win this game, you'd have to score two runs anyway, so might as well score three. And the count is 2-0. Misses outside. That's been the spot where Webster's missed uh, for the most part here today. There's strike one called out or black. Even a lot of the strikes are on that side of the plate. It's really falling off heavily today. All of his momentum's taking him to first base. Swing and a miss from Gray. Evens the count at two and two. 2 0 Lawrenceville. RBI single that hit second base back in the first and then the solo shot from Patterson to begin this inning. This one popped up towards second on a check swing. And Samples easily puts that one away for out number one. Now Boston Gray will step in. Lawrenceville starting pitcher. Worked around a leadoff bunt single in main part from a line out double play. There's strike one call to Boston Gray. Yeah, as a pitcher, you certainly have to have short-term memory. Um, you got to get rid of some of that uh, stuff that happened. You got to put it in the rear view. And any damage that's done has been done. You got to look past it. And there's a called strike. One and two the count. You're going to give up mistakes and you're going to give up runs. The only thing you can do is minimize everything you do. And all you can ask for from a pitcher. Foul back to the screen. Count stays one and two. Unless you're in the 1960s Bob Gibson, I don't see you not giving up many runs. So it's going to happen. You just got to get through it. Webster's next pitch. Pretty good breaking ball, but Gray does a good job of laying off. He brought that out in the spot you would want it in a one two. This one spiked in for ball three. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Well, he was going to first. I was confused. Trying to get that on base percentage up. Down is full. One down, one in already for Lawrenceville. 
And there's the ball that misses low for ball four. So this time, Gray walks. And it'll step, Noah Wilson will step in, right fielder. And in the nine slot, in the Lawrenceville lineup, first pitch, outside ball one. Gray leads from first with one down. Pick move safe at first. Webster, out of the stretch, comes set, comes home for a strike one call. Count to one and one. On Lawrenceville's nine hitter, and Noah Wilson. Redbirds have been very um, they've kept a lot of focus on those runners over at first and they're trying to keep them honest as uh, you would like to see but they've thrown over a lot when those guys have been at first base. Yeah, quite a bit. A lot of times uh, first batter, first runner on base threw over about five times. Out in front of this one, swing and a miss, two and two the count. At one point we had more throwovers than strikes. Two and two. And it'll go three and two. And this one bounces all the way to the backstop as it hit well in front of the plate. Gray takes second. Next one from Webster, ball four low. Back to the top, here's Maddox Pargan, who walked in the first. Webster comes home. This one misses outside. Got to find that strike zone quick or else Norrisville can put up a big spot here. This one's a fly ball to center. Joiner going back, still going back. He's there, makes the catch, throws it in. Runner's going to tag, going to third on the fly out to center. Neelan Vickers, he popped out to second base. That's the hitter with runners at the corner. First one to him. Inside on the hands for ball one. Like the first, you stranded the guy at third. You probably need to do it here. You don't want to let them keep running it up. Flared over towards the right side of the field. Scales, the first baseman, gives it a look, and it's out of play. Count is one and one on Neil and Vickers. Takeoff attempt at first, and Wilson is back in safely. Runners going, and they will throw down, and Wilson will steal second. Single will score two now. 
Two and one to count. Webster to the plate. Popped up. Anything but routine this year. Webster's underneath it, and he drops it. And the run will score. Coach. Three nothing. Coach might take out that runner for not running all the way down. That's what I'm thinking here. And again, that's uh, now they're just gonna have courtesy runner coming in for the catcher. Gonna have a long talk about that one. That's well, just courtesy, so I mean, no, catcher, but, but he's talking about him not running. Right, running I, he would have yeah. been coming out either yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, like you said, he might get a little bit more yeah. chat than normal, but no harm, no foul. He again, got Paxson. I know Webster needs to make that catch when he's under it, but he doesn't need to be the one there. Someone's no. got to come get that baseball. Yeah, that's the first baseman's ball all day. It's almost to the point where they might just need to practice for three hours of just getting in a triangle and throwing it in the middle and talking and communicating. It's, it's bad at this point. 2-0 the count. The score is 3-0. to zero. Lawrenceville on top of West Frankfurt. Two more Frankfurt airs already in this ball game. Two pop up six feet in front of home plate. That's the reason why they scored two runs. Up and in, three and zero. Oh. To Iver, singled. He's the one that hit it off uh, the second base bag. In the first. The three and zero oh is now three and one. Next one from Webster. Swung on and missed for strike two. Young runner at first. Yeah, I thought I'd say it might be smart to step off, but they're going to do this so the runner will score. The runner does score. Good job. Good job manufacturing a run there. We go to the bottom of the second. It's 4 nothing, Lawrenceville. Kids Corral Incorporated, celebrating 25 years serving the children and families of Southern Illinois. Owned and operated by Gina King and Kristen Cass. Kids Corral in West Frankfurt. With an award-winning body shop right here in West Frankfurt, Illinois, Wix is your hometown Chevrolet, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram dealer. Come out and visit us in person or online at gregweeks.com. Your hometown dealership right on the price right off I-57. on the bottom of the second and Paxton they don't know a lot about this Lawrenceville team but uh, right now it's looked like an experienced team kind of picking on a team that's not had a whole lot of reps at the varsity level yeah you know they're um, they're definitely taking advantage of a young squad you know but it all goes back to you can't give team four outs it should have been out of that inning before any of that happened you had a pop-up that should have been a can of corn and anything but that fortunately it was anything but a can of corn I was trying to think of a nice pun but I couldn't get anything out so fortunately it's a little early for me still Swing and a miss. Hayden Mittner is fouled into the glove for strike one. 
Batting fourth, playing short for Frankfurt. Gray back to the mound, and this one popped up. Back out of play behind home plate. 0 and 2. Some harsh scoring again in the scorebook from Frankfurt's side. Uh, as Bennett was actually listed as reaching on an air. Hmm. Hitting the lines out here in the center for out number one. What we've seen from this team, that probably is an error for them. Right, quite frankly. I mean, I think that if the catcher would have jumped out immediately, the play would have been made. But the catcher was on his back toes. Yeah, but uh, mental errors don't go down in the book. Right. No, I would have given it a hit. But, I mean, I kind of see where they're coming from. But the pitcher had to go a long way for that. Here's Will Scale. And you don't know even if a good throw gets him. It would have been close. Frankfurt went a long time without a hit between yesterday and then before that on Wednesday. No hit at Ziggler Road. And I don't think they picked up a hit against Benton until the fifth. It's tough. And if they're scoring here today, they still don't have one in this one. Two and one the count on scale. Down the third base line, that's going to be a foul wall. Two and two on scale. Duncan waits on deck. The two two, outside ball three. Three two is ball four. Missing low. Scales reaches via the walk. And here's Eric Duncan. Redford third base. Redford's had a runner on first in that first inning, but unfortunately a double play has kind of been the way at least this week's gone for the Redfords. High and outside to Duncan for ball one. Redford did have some activity, but it went game pretty quickly. <laughs> it went as quickly as it came. Fouled back. One and one on Duncan. Webster would be the next one. Duncan goes after one high in the zone. Fly out to left. Denard sticks the glove up for out number two. Uppercut swing. There's Deacon Webster. Batting seventh. And starting pitcher here today for Frankfurt. Webster's first pitch smacked out towards the gap. Glove is up. And they should send Scales here. He's going to be held up. And he was good decision. Kind of watching the he got caught ball watching. With two outs, he's got to be running immediately. I mean, you've got to score there no matter what. That ball was in the air. He should have been halfway to third base by the time the ball came down. It's a young mistake, but in a game where you've already made quite a bit of mistakes, you can't be doing that. Already down 4 nothing. Lucas Parker is the next one up. He's going to be running on contact with two outs. First pitch he sees. Slow roller to third. High throw and back down on the bag. Is Patterson for out number three. The Redbirds unable to cash in. We're going to the third. It's 4 nothing. Lawrenceville on top.
the city of West Frankfurt is proud to support the students of Frankfurt Community High School. The future is in the youth of our community. Go Redbirds! All right, uh, you got a pitching change for West Frankfurt. It'll be Cam Joyner going to the hill, replacing Deacon Webster. And this pitching change brought to you by Power Wash Plus. So just two innings of work uh, to start for Webster. He allows four through those two innings. And he'll hand the ball off to Cam Joyner, and we'll see if he can find some stability out there and keep Lawrenceville uh, off the board and try to get the first zero of the day after giving up one in the first, two in the second. Yeah, you know, it's just going to be important to uh, throw a lot of strikes, and, you know, unfortunately, you have to say hopefully your defense is behind you. It should only be a one-run game. I mean, I to me, the only run that should have scored in this game was the home run. I don't know if that's how that uh, stats add up. I don't know if they with the unearned run, because they technically gave that an error, didn't they? For us, so all of those were unearned runs besides the home run, correct? I, I would think so. Yeah. So, I mean, Deacon didn't pitch terrible. Just had to, unfortunately, what's been the problem for the Rebels all year is you got to get more than three outs in an inning. So here's Cam Joyner. First pitch, grounded to short, mitten, fields, fires to first, runner safe. The ball that's got to be charged. Yep, can't stay back on your heels as a shortstop. Have the one on one system. So Ivers, infield hit, he takes off. And he'll easily steal second on a called strike one. Joiner to the plate. This one misses. One and one. Fouled down the third base line. Strike two. One and two the count. On Landon Sanders, who struck out looking first time to the plate. He floats in, but below the zone for ball two. So Bennett moved from right field to center field. Webster went from the mound to right field. And then you got Joyner on the mound. And Sanders swings and misses for out number one. what his approach is this at bat. We saw a lot of swinging from him in his first at bat on pitches out of the zone. Outside ball one. To Eli Venar. Joiner checks the runner. He steps off. His Ivers was dancing out at second base. Next one popped up in foul ground. Scales over. Can't get to it. Well, the best way to get to those balls is not have your glove out the whole time 
you just need to see where it's going and run to it immediately. When you're gliding with the ball, that's why you're not getting to a lot of those. I mean, same thing with pop-ups to a catcher. You know, you can't glide with the ball. You got to see where it's going. And you got to get there before the ball gets there. You get to that spot, then you check. Then you get. check. Yeah, it's not like it's gonna be. You just got to see where it's going and then go for it. Just elementary stuff. One and one to count. Joiner to Venard, and he swings and misses. Way out front. Strike two. It's like a little changeup action there. Throw the same thing or a fastball high and in. Use the speed and the high level. Fouled into the glove for out number two. Sanders struck out twice, and Venard has struck out twice. Here's Jack Patterson. So the first two guys repeated what they did. Let's hope Jack Patterson doesn't. He went deep to left. He's got a runner on base this time now, so now he's thinking maybe let's do one with some RBIs. He barely got that one over the 310 sign over there. Let's see if he can do it again. He didn't get very high up in the air. And didn't get got out pretty quick. Yeah, barely got over and barely stayed uh, fair. Nice piece of hitting. Nice line drive. Ivers let off with an infield single, back-to-back -back strikeouts. He takes off for third, and he'll easily steal third as balls out of the glove of Odom. Now a wild pitch or a pass ball at runner scores. Runner that should have been out to begin with. He should be out of this inning already. I like that inside pitch. Smacked off the fence down the left field line. And counts one and one. You didn't learn your first at bat. I wouldn't throw him anything inside. Work him away heavily and see if he's going to pull it. He's a very pull happy hitter. Count two and one. Another runner at third for Lawrenceville. High marking pitch that comes into the zone. Patterson waits on it. Fouls it off for strike two. It's effective because it's that's something not a lot of hitters are going to see. Oh. Um, when you can see a lot of them, they're like they're standing up completely and then starting their swing almost again because of how slow it's coming in with the height of it. Try it again and a swing and a miss. Patterson strikes out. We go to the bottom of the third. It was a scoreless top half of the inning for Cam Joyner and the Redbirds. Redbirds Live, brought to you by the partners of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates, including former West Frankfurt High School dual sports standout Lance Brown and fellow West Frankfurt alumni and veteran Matthew Carraway. The law firm of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates are proud members of the West Frankfurt community and proud servants of all of Southern Illinois. Paxton, there's the momentum Frankfurt might have needed uh, with Cam Joyner, a nice top half of the third that included three punch outs. And working around the leadoff air there, so he did a really good job not allowing a run. And you know now, hopefully, the first time you're not giving up a run in the top half, hopefully the offense can at least get one back here. He's got plenty of time left in this game. Just need to chip away. The Redbirds will have. Samples leading off, then Bennett and Joyner. So 9 1 and 2 for the Redbirds, and why not this inning score? You know, put up a couple runs here. 
Yeah, you're in a good spot in the lineup too. I know you're in the nine, but Samples is an on-base guy, so yeah. if he's able to get on, foot to the top, and those guys can come up with already someone on base. I think really at this level, it's that the leadoff batter of the inning, even more importance to him than some other levels, because you get that first guy on and you can really have a big big inning. You can or, start a lot. Yeah. Or if you get the first guy out, you feel like, all right, we've already got a, we're already against odds to get something going offensively. Oh and one the count. Next one. Off speed below the zone, ball one. I like how quick he works. He just gets his the ball back to the catcher, goes right back up, and starts going again. He's got a nice rhythm to his wind up. Count now two and one. This one scoots to the backstop. Yeah, it's it's funny to see some of the different rhythms that pitchers have. And I feel like uh, this one missed as well. Uh, more of a sense of a feel for it when guys get up there and go quicker. And mm -hmm. well, some of them guys that take longer, it seems easy, like they can easily lose uh, some command. Because this guy's up there just going right okay. after him. Well, he's been pitching with a lead the whole game, so he's got. You can tell he's kind of pitching with a chip on his shoulder here. He's going to just kind of go at them and see if the Redbirds are going to give him anything back. Three and two, the count. Grounded over towards short. There's Sanders. Field fires the first for the first out. Got a good defensive team here so far. Now Jace Bennett. See if the approaches or anything changes here the second time through the lineup. First two batters, I mean, you had some good at bats there with reaching on base and then a line drive to third. Just unfortunately turned into a line drive double play. First pitch to Bennett. He smacks it over towards second. Knocked down by Gray, but Bennett beats it out, and he's reached both times. Get the official scoring for Paxton on that one. I'm giving that a hit. So you're giving Jace Bennett a couple hits, and I have a feeling our scorebook's going to give Jace Bennett a reaching on two airs. Yeah, well, I mean, it was a diving. He was he slid it on it. I mean, I think it could have been made, but his angle on it was the only way he was going to be able to was slide. Big difference from two and two and zero oh and two on your day, and you we got him at two and two for two, and the Frankfurt scorebook has him open. 0 oh for 2, reaching on two airs. Yeah, he's 2 for 2. Anybody that knows ball knows that was a base hit. His first at bat. 1 and 0. Oh. The check on Bennett. Back in easily. Cam Joyner, who has swapped from center field to the mound in this ball game, is at the plate with a 1-0 count. He shows bunt. Pulled it back in time for ball two. It'll be interesting to see what Gray does here. I mean, he's shown to be a pretty good athlete. He got to that ball quickly on the first bunt attempt, so it might be interesting to see if he tries to maybe throw to second or not a huge lead over there at first. Joyner instead swings the bat. It's fielded down the third base line. Goes through Buckner. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one to count. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. Throw down to second. And it's a stolen base for Jace Bennett. Two and two the count. One down. And Bennett swipes second. He's down there in scoring position now for Joyner. He's in a two-ball, two-strike count.
Next pitch. Popped up. Fouled out of play. Gray gets Joyner to go out in front of this one. It's popped up and into the glove of Pargan for out number two. Chase Patterson now bats. Popped out to second base in the first. Gray looking to work around some traffic. This one misses outside ball one. Patterson lays off ball two. He's been Frankfurt's best hitter this season, and this is a good time to smack one out to the outfield and put the Redbirds on the board. Got a good hitter's count, 2-0. Gray to the plate, outside 3-0. Mitten would be next. For the most part, though, with Gray, even when he is missing, he's not missing by too much. He's kind of all around the zone. Even this at bat, he's been pretty. There's been a few called balls that were, I thought could have gone either way. And there's ball four. Four-pitch walk to Patterson. Who knows the way he swings the bat? That might have been a plan. Well, it worked out. Uh, now you got to force anywhere if you're on defense. Trust levels shouldn't be too high. Minton did smoke one to center his first step bat, so let's see how he does here. First pitch swinging his first step bat. First one to Mitten. This one misses ball one. Hmm. It's pretty close there. Two on with two down. Bennett at second, Patterson at first. Down in the dirt, ball two. This would be the time. Pitcher's not throwing strikes. You do a back pick with your first baseman because you could probably get them thrown out with how aggressive the lead is at first base on a quick pickoff move. This one too high, ball three. Gray hasn't missed by much, but a couple that could have gone either way. Yeah, last at bat a couple. and This seems like this at bat just missed a tad up on a couple of pitches. And this one's inside ball four. Force not anywhere. Will Scales bats with the bases loaded. The Redbirds need some runs. Could be a big momentum swing for both sides. Whoever can make it happen here if they can get a third out or if the Redbirds can get some runs here. First pitch swinging after eight straight balls, and it's popped up out to shallow center, and there's the out. We're going to the fourth. It's 4 nothing. Lawrenceville on top of West Frankfurt.
Ask Melissa Walden about Shelters Auto, home and life options. Call or text at 618-937-2092. Melissa Walden, Shelter Insurance in West Frankfurt. All right, let's take a quick look at our Redbird Outlook going forward. That's brought to you by Kids Corral, and we'll see what we have set up for next week. The Redbirds, we will have one broadcast next week. That's Tuesday. But on the schedule, next week for the Redbirds, Monday at Anna Jonesboro, Tuesday against Benton. We'll have that one as that one originally at Benton, but it's been flipped to here at West Frankfurt. We'll have coverage on the 23rd. Wednesday the 24th, the Redbirds are at Carterville. And then they're off the rest of the week. JV will play that Saturday at home against Heron. Softball, their schedule coming up next week. They are just about done at home. They have one more home game, and that's it. Um, a whole bunch of road games in there uh, going forward. It's kind of crazy. Monday, Wednesday, Saturday scheduled for them this week. Monday at AJ, Wednesday at Carmi, and Saturday around Robin at Johnson City against Johnson City and Flora. All right, that's your Redbird Outlook brought to you by Kids Corral. This um, softball start earlier, though, than baseball? Same opening day. Hmm, that's interesting. So we have about a month of no home games. Talk to the field crew out here. They're fine with it. Yeah, you got a pretty good source with that, don't you? I do. <laughs> Ball one. To Hunter Gray. So this is above the zone. Ball two. This is your time to get thrown off. You see a guy like Webster, and then you, you get a relief guy like Joyner coming in after that. Um, not necessarily. No, nah. it's just all about how you approach it. The only thing I would ever struggle with, if it, I would tend to get pull happy sometimes. But other than that, it's just all about how you, your mindset going up to the plate. There's strike one, two and one. The count to Gray. Make it three and one, and now four and one. And that gets you first base. So leadoff walk here in the fourth. It gets you a free expressway to first base. That'll be Boston Gray. You had to really grind through that last inning. Ran into a point where he had thrown, well, what, nine or ten straight balls. I said eight. You said eight. We walked nine, three yeah. in a row, so it would have been at least nine. Nine, yeah. I want to say it was ten. He had two strikes on that batter before. Under that one heavily. Foul ground. Patterson makes the play. A little un unorthodox, but hey, first out. There's no pictures in the scorebook, so we're good. No, no. Not yet, at least. Runner's going to go, oh, and a nice hit and run. Nicely executed. Wilson smacked it through to hold it short. Runner's at the corner. Base hit for Wilson. Back to the top, Maddox Hargan. Got a chance here to really open this game up. This momentum's probably definitely on their side after you get out of a bases loaded jam. And at the top of the order now. Runner going first pitch, swinging fly ball out to left. Patterson drifting back towards his left. He's there. It's going to be a sacrifice fly from Pargan.
their earned runs. I mean, you take away the ones that they scored via errors and home run, their earned runs have been all small ball type of uh, plays here. Nice baseball sound team here. Runners going again, being aggressive on the bases today. And again, safe down at second on ball one. Another one out there, and this is Bickers at the plate. Reached on an E1 last time and floats this one over the head of Mitten. That's going to be an easy run to score in Wilson, who's just trotting home to make it 6-0. RBI single from Bickers. This is a pretty good fundamentally sound team. Now it's Ivers. Play baseball the money ball way. And they have Ooh. him picked at first in Bickers, so picked off by Joyner. But more damage done by Lawrenceville. Two more. Touch home. It's 6 0. Indians leading your Redbirds as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Wallace Industrial Tools and Supplies knows Southern Illinois. Located in West Frankfort, they're your Milwaukee superstore with over 8,000 square feet. Wallace Tools has the largest selection of Milwaukee within a two-hour radius. Find power tools such as drills, saws, lights, shop backs, and more with pricing lower than you'll find anywhere else. Wallace Industrial in West Frankfort. Kids Corral Incorporated, celebrating 25 years serving the children and families of Southern Illinois. Owned and operated by Gina King and Kristen Cass. Kids Corral in West Frankfurt. Eric Duncan's going to be leading things off here as the Redbirds are hoping to get some momentum back in their way here as it's 6 nothing. Redbirds had bases loaded that last inning, but unfortunately weren't able to bring anybody in. and Then they gave up two runs there in that top half, so now you're down six runs here. And What are you going to do here, Garrett? Uh, you got to find a way to get a couple guys on base, right? Uh, Absolutely. And it starts with the first guy. We said it earlier. It's very tough to score if you don't get that first guy on. And... Um, we keep saying it. We've done it. There's been a few games where Frankfurt's been down around this. I feel like they get down 6 nothing every time we have a game here. It's, yeah, they, they um, do, do seem to get around that 5 or 6 spot. And a lot of times, they make a run. Yeah, they do. Uh, you'd like to not always get down, but as first pitch, ground ball to short, and it's going to be a ground out as it was picked over at first by Patterson for out number one. 6-3 on the put out of Eric Duncan. Nice pick there. Soft hand throw there by the first baseman. Saves in air. And here's Deacon Webster. First pitch, strike one looking. Seems like Austin Grace found his rhythm here a little bit more. Pumping strikes here this inning. Nephew of Sonny Gray. That's what we're going with, anyway. Sunny, yeah. Looked like it here today, like he, he could has. be a relative of him. Yeah. And a uh, few starts we've seen from Sunny Gray this season. Next one, foul back to the screen, one and two. 36-year-old, you're paying $24 million a year <laughs> to throw five innings a night for you. 
fair. They were working him back. Uh, yeah, the pitch count. Yeah. And he was still able to get wins in both of those games. Two and two the count to Webster. Granted, he did play Oakland. That's a nice one against Philadelphia. Though. Philadelphia a was lineup. a good lineup, yeah. We got to go watch the Phillies beat St. Louis. No. I'm on a losing streak big time at Bush Stadium. Maybe I'll go back next time. I just won't bring you. Yeah. But yeah, Quincy hasn't seen a run in forever either. Neither were you. You missed the Cardinals one run. Oh, well, they scored a second. That's right. In the, yep, at the very end there, didn't they? And a third. Made it 3-3 and then ended up losing 5-3. Mason Wynn had himself a game that day. And Deacon Webster's got himself a hit out to the left. Deacon's had a couple hits today. He smoked that double. Could have been an RBI double, but unfortunately, runner didn't score. Probably got the hardest hit ball for the Redbirds today. Fortunately, he hit the deepest part of the field. Lucas Parker steps in. He grounded out first pitch to third. DHing. He swings and misses strike one. Webster leads from first, and did we have a balk? We did. Mm, looks like it. So Webster will be granted second base. Count will be 0 and 1. No complaint from the coach, so seems to be okay with it. And a mound visit here brought to you by La Fiesta Mexican Restaurant in West Frankfurt. Can't go wrong with La Fiesta. Right. You Best know, chicken last, chimichanga in town. Last weekend we we brought it up. You were going. Mm -hmm. I in fact ended up going right after the mm -hmm. game. So. Did you see me there? No, you were out in the VIP section. I was. I had my own room. That's right. Yeah. But should have told me you were there. I would have stopped by. Yeah. Maybe. Cool. Had a lot of priorities. I know it. I didn't want to get in your way. I know you got a busy schedule. I appreciate schedule. that. I appreciate that. Very busy man. You can't go wrong though, La Fiesta. What, what's your go-to there? I like to change it up. Do you? I like okay. to get something different. Um, Their nachos are really good. Have you ever had those shredded chicken nachos? I'll try them out next time. Do that. Get some peppers and onions with it. There Fantastic. You go. A large sweet tea. Or something else. Oh, yes. Only if you're within the age limit. That's right. 0 1 count. So we resume. Ray on the mound. There, strike two call. Makes his coach look like a genius. Nothing better than a first pitch strike after a mound visit. The 2 slow roller towards third, it'll go foul. Wouldn't be surprised to see a waste pitch here by Boston. I'd go way out of the zone into the other batter's box with an off-speed pitch or something high. Yeah, Patterson likes, or Parker likes to swing a little bit more than some of the guys in the Franklin lineup. Webster's back in safe on the pick attempt at second. It's a perfect throw, though, where that ball was. That's perfect. Yeah, but I'm catching here. I'm throwing. I'm calling for something away, off speed, or fastball high. Gray to the plate. Outside. Ball one. Maybe just too far outside yeah. for Parker to go after. You're up 0-2 there, so it's fine to waste. You would have liked it to have been, yeah, a little more. A little more competitive. Yeah, but make him go for it, maybe. But it still doesn't hurt you. You can still try to go back out there again. Yeah. I was about to say, nice rip. Instead, ball left up in the zone is going to be an RBI base hit for Lucas Parker. Was late getting it back in, and he'll take second base. That's a good piece of hitting. Yeah, you know, he definitely left that up. That was about at the belt high there on the inside part of the plate, and he turned on it. You see, we've seen this year he likes to be a pull hitter. He really does like to pull a lot of his hits. They're going to throw it on the inside part of the play. That's a pull hitter's dream. That's Matt Carpenter. Hopefully that gets some runs here for the Redbirds. Chris Samples comes in. Grounded out to shore. He takes strike one. 
That's some nice movement on there. 6 1 the score. Lawrence still on top here in the bottom of the fourth. One on, one out, one in for Franklin. Samples goes way up in the zone, and they've got Parker hung up. They've got him in a rundown. Samples, if he's going to go, he needs to go. Instead, they'll tag out Parker, and Samples is still at first base. It's a frustrating out, especially with the play in front of you like that. But it's the fielder's choice, and I don't remember all who threw to who, but a whole bunch in there. Fielder's choice, and you can score at five, and then so on and so forth. But it wasn't as crazy as that one we saw a few years back, though. With Harrison Bader coming out there from center field. Yeah, you don't normally see that, but that was something. Ball one high to Jace Bennett. It's our second rundown of the day. You don't see rundowns very often. Bennett takes ball two. Fortunately, both rundowns not in the favor of the Redbirds. Next one, way outside ball three. Jace Bennett trying to reach for the third time in his third trip to the plate. This is the guy that has to be at the top of Frank's lineup. Yeah, I would agree. He's a good table setter. And he is here today. He takes strike one. He's a competitor, too, and that's what you like from a leadoff hitter. He's not going to waste any at-bats. Next one, ball four. Missing a little high here, and he's one in those calls, and we're going to have another mound visit, so it might mean we're going to have a pitching change. We got the slow walk to the mound. Bruce Bochy pace. And that will do it. For Boston Gray, who goes three and two-thirds, And he's got a couple left out there. This pitching change brought to you by Howe Insurance in West Frankfurt. And Lawrenceville looks to avoid any sort of drama here. They're wanting to get, you know, make the move quick before Frankfurt creeps back into this contest. Yeah, you know, we kind of saw that last uh, game we did together. Right, junior had, varsity game. Yeah, you had that early pull, which ended up being a really smart move there by their coach. You know, a lot of times you see coaches stick, especially with how well Boston has pitched so far this game. You, most pitch, uh, coaches will kind of leave them out there, but nice decision to change things up a bit here. Got the first baseman now. Be pitching. Yeah, that's Jack Patterson. Which... When I was walking up here today, he was warming up earlier with Boston, so it must have been a two-man pitching crew today is what they wanted to go with. Boston gave you almost the first four, so now they're hoping you can finish it off for them. Probably would have liked that finish out here in the fourth. Finish the fourth, but a good start, a, a really good outing but he, uh, from Greg. He did a really good job. The last few innings, he started to throw more pitches. That's what I would say probably got to him because he, he started to rack up the pitch count there, it felt like. And Frankfurt's getting into where everyone's hit twice. Yeah. Um, you know, that is a thing. And, you know, first time through, not sure if Frankfurt had a hit other than Webster. Now second time through, the guys uh, tallied up three more hits. And Gray started missing a couple of pitches out of the zone and led to some walks. But all that. His team still with a five-run cushion. Oh, he pitched a great game. Had a good defense behind him. And that scratcher for me is he only threw 59 pitches. See, so I didn't think he was that high on his pitch count. Now, obviously, there might be something coming up on a Monday or Tuesday where they might want to use him as a starter or a relief guy. So. In any way, they would yeah. probably want him fresh for Monday right. and available. Well, and if, I mean... You're up five here. If you, the way this game's gone, you feel like you're in pretty much control with the way your defense and offense is done. So, and and you don't know. It might be the same case for Patterson. He might have a number here. Yeah, that he's no got. more than 60. Yeah. Hoping to get 120 out of both. Patterson comes in.
Gray moves to second. Ivers moves from center to first. I hate that there's two outs because I would love to maybe put a button down here and see how this pitcher moves off the mound. First pitch to Joyner is ball one. And unfortunately, with two outs, you don't need to do that with a four sound of any of the bags. Another move, Hunter Gray from second to center. Those are the defensive changes. Lawrenceville, ball two. Take until you get a strike, Garrett. Might as well. It's a fresh, fresh face, fresh arm out on the mound. Make him come after you here. You know, a big power bat at the plate. It's not like you can knock one out of the ballpark. It'll be strike one. Now you're ready to go. You're still in a good hitter's count. It's a big swing pitch here. And the pitcher still has to come to you. you got two guys out there. He doesn't want to walk. The base is loaded. Swung on and missed for strike two. Worked him in here a lot this at bat. Be interesting to see if they stick with that or throw something off the table on the outside part of the plate. I haven't really seen what his off speed pitches are like. Joiner stays alive as he spoils this one towards the Lawrenceville dugout. Keeps working him in. Patterson to the plate. Down the third baseline again. Foul. Make sure he fouls off anything closer. They've worked him inside a lot here, so I wouldn't be surprised. Go outside, go outside here, thinking he's going to. Oh. Takes low, back behind the runner, and in safe is the runner, and the lead runner goes to third in samples. Through behind Bennett, just able to get in safely back to first base. The coach is a little upset over there, so it's like whatever happened was not planned that way. So no reason to throw behind him. You got a lead runner out there. Well, unless you're going to get him. If you do, you better. And they yeah. didn't. Oh. Patterson yep. didn't come set. Yep, good call. Runner will take home. Joiner will still be at the plate. That's a balk and that's a run. I was wondering if they were going to call it. It's unfortunate if you're Joiner. <laughs> Get hit by a pitch and it doesn't count. <laughs> the count will stay two and two, or is it three and two? It'll stay the same what it was before. It's just going to replay that pitch. So it's still free to. So the count was full yeah. before that. Okay. Patterson comes set this time, and he throws strike three to get Joyner looking. Joyner goes down looking. Redbirds pick up a run. It's 6 2, or they pick up a couple of runs. They're in the fourth. It's 6 2. We're going to the fifth. With an award-winning body shop right here in West Frankfort, Illinois, 
Wix is your hometown Chevrolet, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram dealer. Come out and visit us in person or online at gregweeks.com. Your hometown dealership, right on the price, right off I-57. The city of West Frankfort is proud to support the students of Frankfort Community High School. The future is in the youth of our community. Go Redbirds! The Redbirds managed two runs there in the bottom half of the fourth. Cam Joyner back to work for West Frankfurt. And a must, uh, it's a must this inning, right, to, for a shutdown. You need a zero. Yeah, no, absolutely. Got some momentum here, scoring some runs there. And it's going to be very important here to keep them at six. And for the other side, you want to keep doing what you did that last inning, you know, give up two runs, so you got to try to keep doing what you've been doing. It's going to be important here for the Redbirds' defense to keep it clean the rest of the way out. That's what's got them here in this deficit to begin with. Ivers first to bat and hits a lazy fly ball. Well, it keeps tracking back. Got the height. Yep. That kept going, and it's gone. Got it high up enough, and that thing just kept on going. It didn't square it up. Not at all. It didn't sound good off the bat either. Way underneath it, and it's gone. It's seven to two on the solo shot from Ivers. I knew the launch angle was there, but nothing's really been uh, besides that line drive. Nothing's really been flying, so I didn't think I thought it was going to die. Honestly, carried a lot further than uh, originally anticipated there. There goes your shutdown inning. There it goes. One pitch. One run. Ended as quick as it started. The joiner now goes after Landon Sanders. Struck out his last time. That reminded me of one of the Wrigley Field home runs. Yeah, I was thinking that. I was thinking when the first happened. I almost made that comment, but I didn't want to. They playing in Chicago. Sanders ahead in the count. Three and oh. Next one from Joyner. Missing ball four. Start the vineyard on a high outside changeup last that bat. Pitch where they definitely did not want it, but kind of went their way. It's been aggressive so far tonight, so we'll see if the Redbirds want to bust them inside like they've been doing all night. Runner's going to have second, he's going to have third. Sanders from first to third as he was going, and it got away. Missing low 2 and 0 on Bernard, who's 0 for 2, a couple of Ks. Missing inside 3 and 0. He's really been worked inside a lot here tonight. Got a very low stance. There should be strike one, and it is. Taking all the way was the left-handed hitting Eli Zanar. Next pitch. Popped up on the infield. Mitten calling for it. He's there. For out number one. 
definitely not the receipt you want on 3 1. Next is Jack Patterson. He struck out and homered. Call that an Adam Dunn, I think. <laughs> yes, that does sound like an Adam Dunn line. <laughs> Man, he could he, he could crush the baseballs. He won it there. Couldn't sit back long enough. He waves through that off speed from Joiner. Better make sure your those are finishing as low as they are. Cause if you keep that belt high, he might send that to the JV field. He had issues with the first at bat against Joiner. In the same fashion, flares this one out towards right, going back. Webster there. Runner's gonna come home. It's a sacrifice fly for Patterson. Get those two runs right back. On that fly out there, though, I would have liked to have seen some momentum behind it and maybe a throw home. And, except we got the, the nice throw to the grass in the infield. Elementary type of plays that just you don't, you've got to see made at this level just the little things and that's why this team's beating you they've manufactured runs by hitting and running by stealing bases by playing good defense yeah, they have played the role and you know Patterson knew he didn't have to try to hit a home run there yep anything to the outfield was probably going to score the run and whether he got out or not and that's uh that's winning that's baseball. just good at bats with less than two outs and like you said winning baseball this one smacked through the hole base hit for Hunter Gray Single out to left. Here's Boston Gray. As of now, the pitcher of record. On the upside. First pitch, swing and a miss. On one way up in the zone. Nice lit up on that one. Off speed misses outside. Even the count. One and one with two down. Two in. Here in the top of the fifth. Runner takes off. Fly ball out towards center. And there's Bennett to make the catch. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. Lawrenceville gets those two runs back. It's eight to two. Middle of five. IBI management manages over 2.5 million square feet of industrial storage warehousing and office space in Tennessee, Indianapolis, Ohio, Illinois, and South Carolina with 64 tenants. Please feel free to contact us for any management needed for your property. Feel free to reach out with any questions to Bobby and Iris Cazzotti. Bottom five we go. It's eight to two Lawrenceville. The teams the past three half innings have traded two runs apiece. So uh, not much ground made up. Redbirds need uh, yeah, two's a crooked number, but they're going to need a little bit of a larger crooked number to get back in this one here in the fifth because Lawrenceville has scored in all but just one inning. Yeah, they're 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 a good baseball team. They're fun. I've enjoyed watching them here this afternoon. They've uh, played a good all around game. And, you know, they found themselves in some trouble. I mean, it's not that Frankfurt hasn't had opportunities to score. You know, you've had bases loaded. Uh, you had two runners on in the, the inning to go. Uh, and even in that first inning, you know, you had uh, the double play. That was a good hit ball. And then you had a line out to center field. So uh, it's just take away those few errors you had early by the Redbirds. It's been a good game all around. But, uh, Lawrenceville just played a really good all around clean game. It's great baseball.
do it for the Redbirds, it will be Patterson, then Mitten, and then Scam. Patterson took off his uh, long sleeves. He had rock and air earlier. He has a whole Redbird sweatshirt on under. He's fouled Ooh. off. Maybe he's wishing he would have wrapped that hoodie around his foot there. Yeah. <laughs> on a chilly day like today, he'll be feeling that the rest of the night. That little piggy won't be going anywhere. One and one to Patterson. From Patterson on the mound. Jack oh. Patterson to Chase Patterson. Spider-Man meme. And Chase Patterson wins the battle. He gets a base hit out the left. Here's Hayden Mitten. Frankfurt now has some activity down in their bullpen. And that looks like Jace Bennett warming up. Counts 1 and 0 oh to Mitten. He's trying to follow up the leadoff single here, bottom five. Patterson leads from first. Too tall for ball two. I'd like to see him maybe aggressive here. He might just be feeling a get me over pitch here. Don't want to look anything right in the middle. Ball three inside. Now you're just taking, taking until you get a strike. If you get walked here, the same thing should be this for the next batter. You're not taking, you're not swinging until you get a strike. Let's see if we want to go here. Showing bunt, pulling back, strike one called. You know, I've never understood that. Why people show bunt, Rio? Nobody knows you're not bunting. And why would you even think of doing that? I think it's to <laughs> maybe throw off the pitcher. Come yeah, to it play. doesn't really do anything. Sometimes you'll see Chase Patterson up there with the Gary Sheffield yeah, shaking does. the bat. Yeah, he I've seen him do that. And yeah. I think it's the same thing. There's yeah. ball four. He does that aggressively. Gary Sheffield. Still hitting bombs to this day. Well, you're juicing like he was. Uh, <laughs> probably. <Yeah. laughs> But everyone in Not his era, Yankees. everyone it in his era. And, and, well, the, it starts with the commissioner letting it happen. Making too much money, man. Saves baseball, as they say. Yep, just like Shohei. Put some parlays together and gets in no trouble. There's a bunt oh. that's going to end up resulting in a base hit. As Pargan was sprinting in, and where it was placed, he couldn't adjust in time. Kyle Oshesk's butt. Second time. Except, except in this case, it works out even better. No outs, yeah. Slow walk. He's got the slowest walk. To the mound. Bases are loaded with nobody out. To that bunt base hit for scale, and if that one's not sc scored a hit, we're gonna we're gonna go down there and protest. We are. Oh yeah, we're gonna send you down there. Okay, I can cause some trouble. Some of these scoring. Okay, they they, they got it as a base hit. Yeah. Good thing, cause Paxton was coming for you. Yeah, I was taking my jacket off up here. It's a big spot here, right? And huge. Two is a minimum you have to get. You've got to get at least a couple. And you get a chunk full. Chunk full? Yep, chunk full. Of them. At least three is what a chunk is. You think a chunk's three? I yeah. Think it's probably pretty good. Yeah. Because, I mean, a couple's few, so a chunk's like you're grabbing more than a few, but you're not grabbing an excessive amount. A chunk, I don't think, has a set number. It doesn't, but I'm saying it's got to be at least three. Because it, you know. Chunk. Yeah. Uh, chunk of yeah. the Cheez Its. <laughs> I'm going to grab a chunk of the M&M's. We're going to grab a chunk of runs no here. No one says that. I do. 
Not right. a chunk. Not a chunk of that. I do. get a scoop or something. I grab like a that. chunk. It's like the Redbirds are going to grab a chunk of runs here. <laughs> we're going to put up a five spot. I'm calling it right here. And get right back in it. Heard it here first. One and oh, the count to Duncan. Grounded to third. Coming home for one. On to first. Not going to throw it. Probably have a double play. Maybe not one to force the envelope. They get the force out at the plate. Deacon Webster comes up, and this might be the guy you want at the plate the way he swung the bat today. Mm -hmm. Smokes that ball. He's two for two. And that is Bennett, who is getting loose. Just hopefully he doesn't go out of his approach here and try to do too much. You, know, you just need to keep the line moving. Webster that gets works. hit by the pitch. He'll take the RBI. He even hits him. Another run. And that will do it for Patterson on the hill. He's not happy. So Big who, spot. Who we got coming in here? We got bases loaded still. That's a tough uh, spot to inherit as a pitcher, but closure is green. You know, at least you're at the uh, spot where you come in in this spot. None of those are going to be runs against you. They're all on someone else if they were to score, but, but you do have an out. It makes for easier force outs everywhere. But yeah, and if you're, I mean, if you're for the Redbirds, you're going to be trying to get as many runs as you can. For them, it's just none of these runs, if all these runs score right now, you're still okay. You just need to try to get the double play or the force outs here if you can. You're fine with the runners at second and third scoring. You just want to limit the damage as much as you can. And the emphasis on throwing strikes coming into this spot is massive. Yeah. A lot of times guys will struggle to throw strikes first batter. Well, you, you can't put them anywhere. Uh, bases are loaded. Again, this is an inning that you get that leadoff guy on and things just tend to happen for Frankfurt. You know, they have a quick first out maybe on the first pitch or two and then the second guy will go up there and see a couple of strikes and all of a sudden it seems like the inning's almost over. You get a guy pitching out of the stretch, it really extends that inning. And we've seen how comfortable guys are in the windup in that rhythm like we were talking about that we saw earlier from, from Gray. A lot more comfortable out of the windup, as most pitchers are. And once he got into the stretch, it just throws that timing off a little bit, especially if you got a guy dancing around. You might have a pickoff move. And runners are important. you got to obviously get runners to score runs. Paxton, we're still, we're still four short of your projection of five in this inning, so I'm ex excited <laughs> for what's about to, about to happen here. Cause, uh, it's coming. You're never wrong. Just ask you. Yep, you know, I mean, that's what you say anyway, so. Not about Mike Schilder, we. Well, hopefully not about the four runs about the score. Oh, I feel like you've made some accurate projections here during our broadcast this year. I feel like I don't ask for too much when I do ask for things. Yeah, you just ask for five runs and a half inning. Just a chunk full. And I think it's going to be important here because he smoked a fastball high, and what I saw from this pitcher warming up is he's got a pretty good curveball here so if I'm coaching I'm just having him throw a bunch of off speed pitches here because you saw that he wasn't able to do much with the off speed he got in his previous at bats and that's Landon Sanders who comes in and first pitch is down in the dirt for ball one it's back pick Patterson back to first and I'm really surprised they didn't try to turn two there on that ground ball to third base earlier a couple at bats ago Could come back to Hunter Swing and a miss. Lucas Parker got the Redbirds on the board last time up. He slapped the line drive out to left. 
It's a 1-1. One, one. Ball too low. If we can keep the line moving here. We've got the top of the order looming. Samples next and then the top. This is down again. Three and one. Like we said, coming in this quick. You really don't have any leeway to, to walk a guy when you, you come in and inherit three runners. The way I'd look at it is everybody scores right now, we're still winning. So I'm going to throw strikes and just throw it in there as easy as I can at this point. But now, now the tank run comes up to the plate. Ball four to Lucas Parker. Pretty easy RBI there. And we'll see Chris Samples. Hit the ball on the ground a couple of times. The ground out and the fielder's choice. First pitch to Chris. Strike one. Lawrenceville leading 8-4, but the Redbirds with the bases loaded here. Bottom five with just one out. Next one on the way. Chopped foul and samples quickly in the hole 0 and 2. He showed to have a pretty good off speed pitch in the warm up, so we'll see if he decides to throw it here. Pretty nice curveball from what I saw. Both teams scored two in the fourth, and thus far they've both scored two in the fifth. Samples goes after a hanger. It's down the left field line and a fair ball. Yes. One is in. Webster's going to be sent. He will score. And it's a two-run single from Samples. Well, now I just need one more, but I'll take more. And now that lineup flips to the top. Here's Jace Bennett, runners at first and second. When he wished there was two outs, though, so that other runner would have scored. Unfortunately, he had to wait to make sure it was down. Bennett shows bunt, pulls back, ball one. We got ourselves a game. You did all that with the bottom of the order. Now you got your best hitters coming up. You got to be pretty good about yourself. Showing bunt, pulling back again. It's Bennett for a 2 0 -oh count. Joiner on deck. Patterson after that. But right now it's Bennett up against Sanders. The 2 0. Fouled off left side. Be a great time for him to pull one down that first baseline and run till tomorrow. A little Chris Duncan like. Inside, black, strike two. Two and two, the count to Bennett. Two, two, what you gonna do? And it's popped up, an infield fly. It's a big out, but now you gotta. Your joiner. Come through here for your teammate. And hey, you're on the mound. You've got a chance to get yourself a win here. You can get this tied back up. Cam Joyner now. Fast with two on and two down. Four have touched home for Frankfurt this inning. Joiner looking for a two out base hit. Keep this line going. Four have touched home. There's ball one. Next pitch. Smack towards center. 
Coming in on it is Gray. It will fall in front of Gray. Runners coming home. Trail runner samples will go to third. And Paxton's got his five spot Let's here. Let's go. In the fifth. I didn't ask for much. Well, the Red Here's Bird, my chunk full. You, you did, but the Redbirds <laughs> delivered a lot. Five runs. They hurt me. The time is calm. Maybe. Maybe we'll just have you ask for a couple runs every inning. The time is calm. <laughs> we'll have you ask for a few runs every inning. How about to. that? I don't want to push my luck, though. Runners at the corners for Chase Patterson, who watches strike one. Now, to me, Chase is probably the best all-around hitter on this team, so you got to be feeling pretty good here. Singled his last time up. Coming home. They will not throw down. Joyner will have second base on ball one. Two outs. Runner will definitely score with Joyner's speed. you got a chance here with a single to take the lead. You throw another little grenade hit out there. Next one. Oh, beautiful. Patterson gave up on strike two. What oh, a beautiful pitch. Knee breaker. The one and two to Patterson. Grounded back towards short. Fielded there. Firing the first for out number three. Good inning. We go to the sixth. Lawrenceville leads. It led the entirety of this ball game, but Frankfurt has cut it to one. Eight, seven Indians on top of your Redbirds as we head to the sixth. Contact Power Wash Plus for a free quote on all your residential or commercial pressure washing needs. Professionally operated and fully insured. Call Power Wash Plus at 618-663-2505 for more information. That's Power Wash Plus at Head to the sixth. Cam Joyner back to the hill. This game's got a lot more interesting, Paxton. A five spot there, as predicted by you, in the bottom of the fifth. The Redbirds are within one run. It wasn't four. It wasn't six. It was five. Exactly what I predicted. It doesn't get any better than that. And now the Redbirds are going to get a few outs here. They're going to score some more runs, and all they're going to need is three more. And we got to win on a Saturday afternoon. Sounds good. Let's yeah. do it. I'm glad that uh, you're leaking the script of this ball game for people. Yeah. We people did. that can't tune in for the, the rest of it, they know what happened. Yep, yep. Yeah. They have plans today, they'll know exactly how everything went out. <laughs> 9 1 and 2 for Lawrenceville. This will be Wilson, then Pargan, and Bicker. This first out, though, is pretty big. you got to get that first out to kind of keep the momentum on your side and feel like you're going to be able to stop them because every time you scored they've scored again so and first pitch to Wilson in for strike one through five innings Frankfurt ended up out hitting Lawrenceville eight to seven costly errors man this one outside ball one Joiner and short arm that one and it bounced uh, near that grass in front of the dirt at the plate the 1-1 one, one. popped up on the infield mitten coming in, and it's a sliding grab from the third baseman, Duncan. Nice can of corn. It's a big out number one there. Yeah, no, their uh, first four runs, three of them were unearned. So, and one of them scored on a 
Not even a hit. This one's popped up. Back out of play over the Redbird dugout. Strike one. To Maddox Pargan. Fourth run scored on that nice little run down there between second and first base when the runner was able to score before he got tagged down. Joiner gets him to pop it up. Back behind third. Duncan in foul ground. Long run and it drops in front of Patterson. Count goes 0-2. It was a long way to go. But you can still see, though, nobody wanted to take charge. To me, that play should have been made. It's up in the left, air for a really left long time. fielder's coming in. Probably yeah. got an easier route to it than Duncan and Mitten, who were chasing it down. And had a picnic before he got it. Little things like that, man, when you ball games. This one misses outside one and two. Because those little things are the reason you're down one now. The one two pitch. Outside ball two. Joyner is trying to get them to bite. Thus far, and this is bad. Bargain has not. Okay. Off speed that takes forever to get there. And just getting a piece this time fouled back. Dogs are barking. Legs must be hurting. I don't mind our. 2 2. Popped up. Duncan giving it a look. It's over towards the dugout and it's going to go out of play. Four, five, six, do up for Frankfurt in the bottom of the sixth. Next pitch. Popped up again. Infield. There's Mitten at short. Makes the play for out number two. A lot of dips going on with these swings here with this pitch. For some reason, they're wanting to go with the pitch. And she just throws her hands at the baseball. They're having problems. Neyland Bickers. Next one. Missing outside, ball one. Two down, nobody on, top half of the six. This one's popped up. Odom with room. And he makes the catch for out, number three. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Joyner gets a one, two, three. Had all three of them guys off balance. The Redbirds trailing by just one run. They come to bat. Bottom of six here for Bill McKee Field in West Frankfurt. Experience a taste of Mexico at La Fiesta Mexican Restaurant. We have the best food and drinks for the whole family to enjoy. See you tomorrow, amigos. All right, Paxton, Redbirds are due, due up here in their 4-5-6 spot. Good spot in the lineup, middle of the order. And Absolutely. We've seen we've seen production from anywhere in their lineup today, 1 through 9, and that seem, seems to be when they win, that tends to be the case. Yeah, you know, and this is the best time to get some runs and get a couple outs. That's all you need, you know, 4-5-6 here. Momentum's definitely on your side. You scored all those runs, you got some quick outs there. So... You just need a couple here to uh, take the lead and get a few outs. But 
Yet again, if you play good sound defense, you're up two. But we could always say that because the game changes completely when those plays are made. But it's been a good battle tested game. Four, five, six, as we mentioned, it'll be Mitten, Scales, Duncan, for West Frankfurt up again. Landon Sanders will return. Third pitcher for Lawrenceville. As he starts his first clean inning. First pitch to Mitten. In there, strike one call. The 0-1 on the way. Foul back quickly 0 and 2. He's a guy you don't really want to pull behind him. He's got a really good off speed pitch. We'll see how he does from the wind up with it. The 0 2 on the way. Down low ball one. One and two. Mitt lays off. It's too high. It's ball two. Broke just a little late. Next one to Mitt. Chopper to short. There's Ivers firing the first for the first out of the inning. Will Scales just walked, just flew out. He had that bunt single early on in that long fifth. He's going to end up near the dirt for ball one. And Scales hits one way up in the air. Left fielder coming over and Bernard to make the play. Quickly one and two down. And it's Eric Duncan. And that's the you know, potentially big difference of you know getting that first guy. Allowing that first guy on, it could have been a totally different inning. And I think getting those first two guys out has allowed Lawrenceville to realize, hey, like you said, they're still leading this ball game. But Duncan back up the middle. That's a base hit on the line. Nice base hit from Eric Duncan. And Deacon Webster now steps into the box. Good chance for another double. Webster takes a good off speed for strike one. Got pretty good control of that curveball. Next one, the Webster ducks out of the way. Count one and one to the Redbird right fielder, who actually started this game on the mound. Next one, Webster lays off. He didn't do a bad job. Just unfortunately had some errors behind him that gave him four runs. One earned. This one misses. Three and one to Webster. Lucas Parker is on deck. Drove in the first runs. Be nice if he drove in the last few. And strike two, and we're even, or full, rather. And Duncan will be off on the pitch. 
Still full count, two outs. Lone runner on base over at first. Ball to the left to the right of an outfielder. Could probably score Duncan. Webster fouls it back out of play. We'll try again. Throw over on Duncan to see if he's potentially going to leave early. And he's easily back into the bag. The 3 2. Chopped towards second. Fielded there on the first. Straight of Patterson for out number three. We're heading to the seventh. Score remains 8 7 Lawrenceville on top of West Franklin. Powell Insurance is a proud sponsor of Revered Athletics. Serving West Frank Group since 1925, we provide auto, home, business, life, and health insurance. Powell Insurance partners with Auto Owners Insurance Company to handle insurance the right way, the human way. Call Ryan, Jessica, or Susan Patton at 937-4000. Top seven, it's eight seven Lawrenceville and a big piece of the Lawrenceville lineup coming up in three, four, and five. So huge inning for Frankfurt. Needing to slow them down. It's Ivers, Sanders, and Bernard after him. Three, four, and five. And it's Joyner. So we'll be back out there. And they'll start with Ivers, who went deep his last time up. High fly ball. If we went off the pitch clock, we would be way overdue. Ball inside, ball one. And this one is up and in on Ivers. 2-0. Oh. Joiners next. Off speed, ball three. Just below the zone for ball four. Four pitch walk. Now Landon Sanders will bat. They will go. Frankfurt, that is, to a new pitcher. It'll be Jace Bennett coming in from center field. Take over for Joyner. Then it will take over Joyner at the prettiest of outings, but you know, he did enough to keep Frankfurt in the ballgame, Paxton. 
yeah, the guy came in, did his job, did what he needed to do, kept him in the game, and now it's a one-run game. Kind of came into this game when it felt like uh, there was no chance of the rubber to maybe come back, and all of a sudden it's a one-run game, so it's just important to keep it a one-run game and hopefully to get some runs and walk it off. And Bennett will have to work around that inherited runner that walked on four pitches. And he'll have to face the middle of that lineup. He'll have four, five, and six. After Ivers walked, he'll have Sanders, Bernard, and Patterson. And Patterson hits a home run way back his first at bat, back yep. in the second. A long time ago, it feels like. Anything Lawrenceville could muster up here to cross home plate would be huge in their momentum and not just stats, but in increasing their chances because it's a lot easier to score just one than two, um, especially late in a ball game. You're trying to tie that game up. And it's also really a rally killer. You know, you've been, past couple innings, you've been coming up, all right, we're only down one, we're only down one. And if you get to your final at bat, now all of a sudden you're down two or three. It's going to be upsetting. Yeah. Because right now, you know, you like you said, you look at the scoreboard. You scored five in a few innings ago. You could easily feel like you can score one run. Uh, but going into a bottom of the last inning, down more than one, it's definitely a tough task. Sanders steps in. Bennett's ready to go on the mound. Ivers leads from first. Top seven, nobody out. 8-7. Lawrenceville over West Franklin. Bennett to the plate. Runner going. And Odom can't get it out of the glove. It's a stolen base. You've got to be able to control a run game. You can't keep one team still bases like this. Bennett to the plate. Smack down the left field line. It's hooking foul. It's a long strike. One and one. Runner leads from second. Try a pick move. And Ivers is safe on a much closer play than it should have been. Bennett to the plate. Bounces in. Odom keeps it in front. Counts two and one. Or a catcher's nightmare. 48 foot fastball. It'll hurt. And uh, how it's set up here, you, that lip sometimes can come into play if they yeah. spike it even further up there. Yeah, those are not fun. Out to right, Webster. Trying to get underneath it. Makes the play, fires to third. It's cut off. Runner moves up on the fly up. Very important there for them to move that runner up those 90 feet. They'd much rather go into that last inning, or last half of this inning, with the two run lead than one run lead. Here's Eli Vinar. Say corners would maybe be in here. And they are. Up the middle is back. And he pops it up. Mitten going back. Mitten. Momentum back. He makes the catch. And walks it back in the infield, a big out number two. And it's Jack Patterson who will bat. Two down, and the runner's still out there.
First pitch. Misses above the zone ball one. Next pitch to Patterson to the backstop, and that's going to be a run. Nine to seven, the score. That hurts more than a base hit. Yep. <clears throat> Cannot happen. And now Patterson bats with no one on base. The 2 0. Smacked out to left on a line and it hit off of Patterson. Will be a double on a line out to left. Of a pinch runner. First baseman? Well, you can pinch run and then you just you get one re entry. Mm -hmm. So if they want, Patterson can come back in. I don't blame him though for wanting to bring in a pinch runner here. That that runner at second, if he can make this a three run lead, that's pretty huge here with two outs. Decided to add some speed on the base paths here. And it's Hunter Gray batting 9-7, Lawrenceville. First pitch, down for ball one. They gave up the one, but it needs to end there. There's a call, strike one. Quick pause, bend it back out there. Strike two, outer edge. One, two, missing high. Evens the count. Redbridge will have eight, nine, and one coming up. The bottom half of the seventh, trailing by two. So it's grounded right back to Bennett. Makes his way towards first, an underhand toss to Scales for out number three, but a big insurance run for Lawrenceville. Has them up 9-7 as we head to the bottom of the seventh. Final at bat, final chance for the Redbirds. Bottom seven, it's 9-7 Lawrenceville on top. And Landon Sanders returns to the hill. 
try to close this one out. Uh, on what has been a pretty exciting ball game. It's been a fun game. Yeah, it's been a nice one. It's kind of been one of those games where it feels like this first few innings was a completely different game. Uh, it's been kind of a long game, but not a bad game in that aspect. So uh, now you're just hoping the Redbirds can get a rally here and walk it off. In our games we've called, it seems like the Redbirds really win those middle innings. They do. Of ball games. The problem is they fall so far behind in the first oh. and second. And well, that's uh, that's the reason why they're at where they're at right now is because of those first two innings on what happened, you know. Ever since that, I think that second pop up that dropped, it's been pretty clean for the Redbirds. They need at least two to keep this thing going. Three would end it. First pitch. In on the hands, fouled off for strike one. After the game, we'll have our post-game show. Give the final box score. Give out a player of the game. Make sure you stick around for our post-game coverage. This one misses low, ball one. Anyway, Parker can get on base. Chops foul again, one and two. The one two on the way. Grounded over towards short. There's Ivers. Fields. Fires to first. And it's Parker's gonna be safe. As it was wide of the glove of Patterson. I see E six on that one. Yeah. Gotta take advantage like they did earlier. They're a good team. They're not going to make many errors, so you have to make sure. Ivers had been pretty sure-handed yeah. for the majority of this game. He looked pretty smooth over at short. And again, we don't know how far off that throw really was from our angle. We can't necessarily tell. It may not have been that far off. Good pitch. Ball strike one to Chris Sample. But the thing is, very rarely, even on a throw, unless it's, it's right at the, unless it's unless right at he drops it, it, yeah. It's probably going to go on the guy throwing the baseball. This one gets to the backstop. Backstop, and that had too much spin on it. It bounced right past yeah, Bakers. Did Bakers did everything he could. You know what, though? If you're catching, I would tell my pitcher right now, don't even worry about that guy at second base. Don't even look at him. He can do whatever he wants. Let's get the out. Now that he's there, he might as well. It's no different than him being already have already touched home exactly. plate. Exactly. He can score all he wants. And if you're the rubber, just let, him, let, let that happen. You know, still third if you can, or just keep moving. But... Called strike two. Nice job from Bickers to bring that down. Looked like it might have been up, but a nice job of framing that pitch. He's got Christopher here in the rocking chair with a first pitch curveball for strike and now a fastball. He could go anywhere. Miss that bat. The one two. Chopped back over the mound. Fielded by the second baseman. Firing to first, and he's out at first. His samples on a bang bang play, but certainly was out by half a step. Nice play by Gray to come get that once it got past Sanders. You know, you don't want to record an out in this, in this inning, but that's one of those outs you're okay with, moving the runner up 90 feet and getting him closer to scoring. Now you just got to find a way to manufacture another guy to touch home plate. Yep. You got your first one out of the way. You've done your job there. Well, and your top of the order is coming up now, too, which, you know, getting that hit, Eric Duncan, Eric Duncan getting that hit and getting a little bit of a rally that last inning really helps getting – these um, guys up here with a chance to score some runs. So if you if you want a chance to win the game in your last inning, the heart of your order and where you want to be at is up. So this is everything you can ask for if you're Coach Smith. 
and they will go to a reliever. And it will be Maddox Pargan coming in. He'll come in with a runner at third, one down, and he looks to pick up a save here. And then a little unorthodox fashion by coming in with already a couple of guys to the plate, but still would be a save opportunity. For Maddox Bargain, he'll have Jace Bennett. And it might be, you know, top of the order. You know, maybe they might have told Sanders going, going in, hey, you get the guys at the bottom, and then when it flips, you're coming out either way. And Even two outs, no one on. I've, I've seen that change made. You know, not taking any chances. Yeah. And I mean, and I'm sure he's told this pitcher, look, you're coming in here with one out. You just need to give me two outs. Don't worry about that guy at third. You know, that guy means nothing. You're just starting come in here and get these two guys out. You're starting the inning up one run, mm -hmm. and you've already got an out. Yep. You just got to get me two. Sounds simple. We'll see. see. The outs are harder to come by in the seventh, it seems like. And we'll see how the team fares with some defensive changes and movements, especially coming off that air. Jace Bennett steps in. Runner at third, trailing by two with one down here, bottom seven. First pitch, outside ball one. Bennett in a left-handed box takes a strike outside edge. Mm. That looked a little outside to me, Garrett. Nice frame job. He's gotten a couple of close ones. Certainly not far enough where it's definitely not one, but late in the game, both sides really want that to go their way. It's two and one. This one misses above the zone. And this a first and third here would be different than a typical first and third. I think Lawrenceville wouldn't have any issue throwing down if a runner took off if Bennett were to reach. But he's now in a two and two count. He takes the second one. That was a pitch to do some damage with right there in the wheelhouse. Could have turned on that. Walk in the second. Next pitch. Inside and up, ball three. Did come down a little late. Crossed high. Looked a little in, too. The 3 2 pitch. Up high, ball four. And you can't treat this just like it's a free pass down to second, because I would assume they would definitely throw through. But you got to be careful, too, if you're the Redbirds, at, especially at third base. You don't want to fall for anything here. That's There'd be nothing more uh, demoralizing than a pick off at third base or something like that. Really, there's no reason to do anything at nope. third. Um, but a young team, you'll see things like that happen. Bennett has to be careful at first base. This is not a guaranteed stolen base. And they've got him picked off, and he's out at first. They've, did that. they've done it twice to Bennett, and this time he was out. And exactly what you didn't need happened. And you could hear a pin drop now on the Rupert side. And they have one out left. Can't happen. That was something they tried pulling on Bennett earlier in the game and almost had him. And this time they get him. That cannot happen. I think Runner and Bennett were probably in the spot thinking it was just a, they're not throwing through. He's the runner that matters. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the guy at third base. There's strike one call. It's Cam Joyner. And that's, one just, one. that's just something a young player's got to keep in his mind, you know. You know, they're worried about me. They're not worried about him. You could tell he was just a little anxious. The throw definitely beat him. Um, I don't know if the tag did, but. Too close to yep. be leaving it in the umpire's discretion there. and It was a bang-bang. Typically, if it looks pretty, it's close. It's going to be called an out. And it was a good 
move from Pargan. Two and one to count here. Out back. Frankert's down to their final strike. Next one lays off, and they'll let the runner come home. It's going to be an easy run. They got to the backstop. Nope. See no harm, no foul for them. The 3-2, nobody on base. Two outs on the way. Down the first baseline foul. Still looks like Coach House over there at first base. Have to give him a little fancy. Giddy up behind yeah. him to get it back He's to on. the I've seen him do that a third a few <laughs> times in my life as well. <laughs> He'll try again. The payoff pitch. High for ball four. The inning keeps going. And now, for the Rivers, you feel like your best hitter's up to the plate. You've got a pretty quick runner at first base there, so it'll be interesting. Chase Patterson bats, tying run at first base, and Cam Joyner, Frankfurt's quickest runner. Nothing coming easy in this game for both sides right now. Try to go over a joiner. He's back in safely. I think everybody was going over that time. Just to see if they got lucky again. Short lead. Try again. And joiner's back in barely in time. And the umpires in the visitor dugout thought he was out. It was close. That's close to that last one. See if they throw over again. They do not. And Patterson swinging. Grounded the short. Tossed to second. There's the force, and that's the ball game. Frankfurt's mistakes cost him in this one. Nine to eight, the final. We'll hear from some of our sponsors. It's our post-game coverage here with Redbirds Baseball and Redbirds Live. Redbirds fall to Lawrenceville nine to eight here on this Saturday afternoon. Wallace Industrial Tools and Supplies knows Southern Illinois. Located in West Frankfort, they're your Milwaukee superstore with over 8,000 square feet. Wallace Tools has the largest selection of Milwaukee within a two-hour radius. Find power tools such as drills, saws, lights, shop backs, and more with pricing lower than you'll find anywhere else. Wallace Industrial in West Frankfort. IBI Management manages over 2.5 million square feet of industrial storage warehousing and office space in Tennessee, Indianapolis, Ohio, Illinois, and South Carolina with 64 tenants. Please feel free to contact us for any management needed for your property. Feel free to reach out with any questions to Bobby and Iris Cazzotti. With an award-winning body shop right here in West Frankfort, Illinois, Wix is your hometown Chevrolet, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram dealer. Come out and visit us in person or online at gregweeks.com. Your hometown dealership right on the price right off I-57. Kids Corral Incorporated, celebrating 25 years serving the children and families of Southern Illinois. Owned and operated by Gina King and Kristen Cass. Kids Corral in West Frankfort. Redbirds Live, brought to you by the partners of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates, including former West Frankfort High School dual sports standout Lance Brown and fellow West Frankfort alumni and veteran Matthew Carroll. The law firm of Sam C. Mitchell and Associates are proud members of the West Frankfort community and proud servants of all. Of Southern Illinois. 
Ask Melissa Walden about Shelters Auto, home and life options. Call or text at 618-937-2092. Melissa Walden, Shelter Insurance in West Frankfurt. Contact Power Wash Plus for a free quote on all your residential or commercial pressure washing needs. Professionally operated and fully insured. Call Power Wash Plus at 618-663-2505 for more information. That's Power Wash Plus at 618-663-2505. Hal Insurance is a proud sponsor of Reverend Athletics. Serving West Frankfurt since 1925, we provide auto, home, business, life, and health insurance. Hal Insurance partners with Auto Owners Insurance Company to handle insurance the right way, the human way. Call Ryan, Jessica, or Susan Patton at 937 937- Four zero zero zero. Experience a taste of Mexico at La Fiesta Mexican Restaurant. We have the best food and drinks for the whole family to enjoy. See you tomorrow, amigos. The city of West Frankfurt is proud to support the students of Frankfurt Community High School. The future is in the youth of our community. Go Redbirds. McDonald's, family owned and operated, Moreland McDonald's has 21 locations to serve you. People's National Bank has been serving the communities of Southern Illinois since 1909. We believe that great customer service along with a wide variety of products will meet all of your banking needs. Come in and check us out today. People's National Bank, member FDIC. The West Frankfurt Aquatic and Activity Center, our proud partner of Redbirds Live. Come check out our heated indoor swimming pool, fitness center, and basketball gym. Stop by for a visit, or you can contact us at 618 937 1665. 9-8, your final score. Lawrenceville knocks off your West Frankfurt Redbirds. Welcome you in our post-game show brought to you by IBI Management. Paxton, your takeaways, thoughts from today's contest. It was one of those games where it felt like it was more than one game. It went on for a really long time. You know, the first two innings was um, frustrating for the Redbirds. They had... Uh, Take away the home run, three runs that scored were unearned runs. So uh, that could be the difference in the game. Obviously, the game would change with you know those plays being made, but it's just kind of been the more of the same here. And then you know uh, it's frustrating every time. There's, it seems to me every time there's a pop up, you don't know if it's going to get caught, and that's something that should be a guarantee every time it's in the air. So uh, just little things like that. I thought the approaches were were solid today. Um, you know, went down a few times and battled back, and uh, you love to see that from a young team. You just got to clean it up. On the defensive end, defense is something that should never go out of style. You know, your offense is going to be hit or miss, but your defense is something that you always need to have ready to go because that's what's going to keep you in games and it's going to help you win games that sometimes you don't deserve to win. Let's get to the pitch, uh, the uh, West Frankfurt City of West Frankfurt box score, and we'll start with the pitching, and we'll start with Lawrenceville. First up, it was Gray, who went three and two-thirds, four hits, two runs, two earned, zero strikeouts, and four walks. And Patterson followed him up, two-thirds of an inning, two hits, four runs, four earned, one strikeout, one walk, followed by two innings of Sanders in relief with three hits allowed, two runs, one of those earned, walked one. Pargan got the save. He closed it out two-thirds of an inning, including that pickoff at first. First, was kind of snuffed out Frankfurt's hopes. He walked a couple in his short outing. Frankfurt's pitching was Deacon Webster, two innings, two hits, four runs, two earned, two Ks, three walks. Then it was Cam Joyner, went four innings of five-hit baseball, five runs, all earned, three Ks and three walks. Bennett threw an inning, allowed one hit in the process. Now for the offense, we'll start with Hargan and the Lawrenceville Indians. He had one run scored, and he drove in a run, walked once. Vickers also with a hit in an RBI. Ivers, two runs scored on three hits. Also drove in two and walked once. Sanders walked once, scored a run. Patterson, two hits, two runs driven in, and one run scored. Hit an RV, or hit a walk and a run scored for Hunter Gray. Boston Gray with a walk and a run scored. And Wilson with a hit, a walk, two runs scored. Patterson had a double, also with a home run, as did Ivers with solo shot. Frankfurt's offense, Bennett was walked twice and had one base hit. Joyner with a hit and an RBI and a walk. Patterson with a hit and a walk. 
Benton with a run scored and two walks. Scales with a hit, one walk, one run. Duncan with a hit and a run. Webster, two hits, two runs scored, and one driven in. Parker with two runs, one hit, two RBIs, and a walk. And Samples with a hit, two RBIs, and a run scored. Parker and Webster with a double apiece. That's your City of West Frankfurt box score. Paxton, let's get to the player of the game. That's brought to you by Melissa Walden Shelter Insurance. You know, there's a t this is a tough one because there wasn't really, to me, anybody that, uh, you know, had a huge, huge game. There was a lot of different performances. I thought Deacon Webster had some nice moments today. Had a couple hits, an RBI. Samples had a huge hit there in that inning that scored two runs. It kind of got him back into the game. Parker got it all started with a hit early in the game. Uh, I I'm going to go with Webster here because he led the team in hitting. Uh, he had two hits and had probably one of their harder hit balls of the day. An extra base hit. Yeah, um, I th uh, you know, but I think it could have gone either way. And I do think Webster pitched. Uh, he only threw two innings today, but I thought he did a pretty good job. Uh, you know, it just comes down to errors again. You know, that's kind of been the Achilles heel for any pitcher this year for the Redbirds. It doesn't matter what they're doing if you're not going to get the defense behind you. But, um, no, offensively, though, I think it could have gone to a couple people. It was a pretty good performance today all around on that side of the, the diamond. But, uh, no, yep, that's who I'm going with is Webster. Melissa Walton, Shelter Insurance Player of the Game, and Deacon Webster here on this Saturday against Lawrenceville. Frankfurt's back next week, Monday at AJ. We will have coverage of their home game on Tuesday against the rival Benton Rangers. We will see you next week with more Frankfurt baseball.